Hello, my name is Rebecca Tapp and this is the DNA of Purpose podcast where we explore purpose as a part of who we already are. We showcase all inspiring stories of the most purpose-driven people on the planet with the intention of giving you the tools to step into the potential of who you were always born to be. After all, it's in your DNA. DNA. Here we are for another episode of the DNA of Purpose podcast. In today's podcast, we are shifting the focus to the purpose of parenting. Why? Because becoming a parent is one of the most challenging transformations we go through in our adult lives. And for women, this transformation is a spiritual one, but let's face it, it is also a physical one. Now, It would be fair to assume that today's conversation is one for the ladies who've been lucky enough to conceive, and in many ways, that is definitely the focus. That said, I know for some of you, you might not have children. So regardless of who you are, I want you to know there are chunks of gold here for everyone, with the most significant point being that childbirth is an epic transformation for for a mother and for parents in general. But in many ways, discovering our purpose is also a birthing process, and the theme of navigating a transition is one we can all relate to. We've all had times where our identity has shifted or where we've had to rebuild ourselves, whether that be rebuild our bodies or rebuild our career or rebuild our sense of self. So today's guest is Anna Coyman. Anna is a certified personal trainer and she is the creator and founder of Strong Sexy Mamas, which we'll be talking about more across the course of today's interview. Now, a quick reminder that this is your last chance to register for the free DNA of Purpose webinar on the 24th of February. If you're a new mum, new dad, or just going through any kind of epic transformation, then right now might be the time to start thinking about how you express your unique gifts with the world. You can find the link to register in the show notes or check out my website, which is www.rebeccatapp.com. Anna Coyman, welcome to the DNA of Purpose podcast. It is such a pleasure to have you here today, coming, coming in from the beautiful South Coast there. Yeah, very blessed. We are away for um, an Australia Day holiday. We normally live in Bondi Beach. Um, We don't live waterfront like this, but we're enjoying it for a few days here um, in Jeroa. So yeah, it's an honor to be on the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. And it, it certainly looks absolutely beautiful where you are. Now, Anna, as a starting point today, I would love if you could give our listeners a little bit of a snapshot of your DNA of purpose. So if you can introduce yourself uh, with regards to your professional career, but also introduce how you found a sense of purpose in it. Okay. So, um, yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, My name is Anna Coyman. I'm an international television host. You can hear my accent. I'm obviously not Australian. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, originally. Um, and I went to school for communication studies. I was always an athlete. I ran track in college. I've run several marathons, including New York and Boston. I've always loved fitness. And television took me to New York City, where I ultimately let, met my soulmate, who happens to be an Aussie boy. And we ended up moving to Sydney, Australia, and I launched a fitness business for moms that focuses on pre and postnatal women, helping them stay safe during pregnancy, but have an active pregnancy, an enjoyable pregnancy, a smoother pregnancy, prepare them for labor and delivery, and then postnatally rebuild our bodies safely brick by brick, because it does take specific exercises in a specific order. I find that very often in pregnancy, women are either treated with such white delicate gloves and it's like sit on the couch, you shouldn't be doing anything. Or you see women, you know, eight and a half months pregnant doing Olympic lifting, which I don't think is, is suitable for uh, most women. And then postnatally, it's it's the same. You know, you're running around, you're, you're tired, you're not sure where to start. Your body is not just looking different on the outside, but feeling different on the inside. Even our mind space is different. And Strong Sexy Mamas is about helping women to feel like themselves again and rebuild that body safely. 
Yeah, and you know what? It's it's such an important conversation, and I've got so many other questions to ask you because, as you and I have dis- discussed before, um, I think it's such a a powerful transformation to to shift from maiden to mother, and it's something that um you know it's our birthright as women um, who are lucky enough to have children, and and I acknowledge that there are some women who absolutely can't, but for those of us who are lucky enough, it's uh, almost like this rite of passage that truly does change us from the inside out. Uh, Physically, as as we will be talking about today, but also emotionally and spiritually. Before diving into that, however, you just mentioned that you yes. are USA born and bred. So I'd really love to understand a little bit more about where you grew up, your family, and how did all of those influences not only lead you into such an incredible career in, in news and media, yes. but also uh, with regards to your ability to step into contribution and service in the work that you're doing today? Well, so my mom and dad are entrepreneurs. They own a small business called the Peppermint Forest Christmas Shop and Oasis Pools and Patio Plus. Um, They have been in business for 30 plus years, actually, and have since sold it to my brother and their general manager. And I come from a long line of entrepreneurs. So this feels like it was sort of something that I was destined to do to start my strong, sexy mama's business from that sense. But to get there, um, you know, I grew up in a household that really valued work, that really valued um, me doing my my physical things. I was always really into sports and all of that and academics and everything. When I went to college, it was in North Carolina. Most girls in North Carolina seem to stay in North Carolina for school and then meet their husband there or in at least in the southeastern part of the U.S., they certainly don't um, stay in North Carolina and or, or go, you know, and end up in Sydney, Australia. I'm a bit of a unicorn <laughs> in that <laughs> sense. If you um, and if if we do ever come back to North Carolina, my husband would definitely be a unicorn in North in North Carolina. Um, but I, yeah, I, I found a love for television while I was in college. I was put up for a um, courtside reporting, basketball reporting job. And I just absolutely loved it. And got an internship at the ABC affiliate, ended up graduating college in three years instead of four. And then in my fourth year, actually, while I was still in college, I became a one man band reporter where you write and shoot and edit all of your own things, which has actually really served me well these days I while bet. I'm building my business <laughs> from the ground up, knowing, having all of these skills. Of course, they were a bit outdated because that was a while ago. I'm 36 years old now. Um, but those, those skills definitely have helped me today and also the on-camera work as well. So I ended up being in North Carolina, got a job at the ABC affiliate. Then I was in Ohio at the NBC affiliate back in North Carolina, in my hometown at Fox, and then got a national job um, or international, I guess you should say, at Fox News Channel in New York. And I worked there for five years and met my husband and we did long distance for a little while. And then he moved to New York and we got married in the boathouse. It was all really romantic. And then on our one year anniversary, while we were having dinner back at the boathouse in Central Park, we decided we were going to pull the pin and move to Sydney and start our family. And um, so now my husband is very much the breadwinner. I'm very much the mom, this maiden to to, uh, mother, this matrescent, (laughs) like you (laughs) referred to. And, And happily right now, it's really good. And it's given me time to focus on my business and on fitness and helping this special population that I do feel like is completely underserved. I feel like the fitness industry kind of preys almost on postnatal women, like, Hey, let's get these before and after pictures Mm. and, you know, let's lose our baby fat. It's like, we don't just have baby fat to lose. We have so much more than that (laughs) going on mentally and physically, you know? So I do think that that population really needs some special attention. And so I've gotten certification after certification to become a specialist in this and I love helping them. Yeah. And, and look, again, we're going to talk about that transition in a minute because I, I know that in your work, uh, working with mums, you do talk a lot about that identity shift. But in just yes. looping back, I mean, you went through a massive identity shift in just coming to Australia because, you know, I you had a really successful career. You still do in the media. So I imagine there would have been, you know, you would have been in the limelight. You had a lot going on when you were back in New York. 
And yes. then Tim comes along, I believe at the time of Hurricane Sandy, although it seems <laughs> that he might have actually caused a bit of a hurricane in your life. So ah, you you did know, there. when we're talking about um, identity shifts, what was it like to, to leave that life, to come all the way down under yes. for love? How did you how did you navigate that? Because I mean, before you became a mum, that was probably the first big transformation you made that yes. really led you to where you are today. I think New York really was sort of a turning point for me anyway, just in life, because you know, being a North Carolina girl, yeah, I lived in Ohio, but it was still um, local TV, and it, it, and then moving to New York, you know, everybody that you meet on the corner is from somewhere else, a different corner of the world, I guess I yeah. could say. And it made me really want to travel the world as much as I could. So when I was working in television, I was a breaking news reporter and an anchor. And I ended up getting lots of days in lieu, as you say here, because I w- had to always be on call. And so then I would take those days that I'd stored up and Tim and I would date internationally, you know, have these international escapades, <laughs> pretty, pretty romantic, um, you know, London and Prague. He was living in London at the time, London and Prague and Boston and Miami. And um, then we did Italy several times and things. And um, you've actually got a few great travel blogs on your website. I was reading one about Dubai, I think. (laughs) And there as well. That was a place that we stopped off while we were traveling, I think, to Italy for a wedding or something. Uh, now, now that COVID's here and now that we have two small kids, those days of traveling seem like dreams of the past. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be back there one day. Yeah. But yeah, without a doubt, um, being in New York just made me, just sort of unzipped me and also made me want to level up. I think that just like if you're playing, if you're a tennis player and you play with somebody who's the same level as you or below you all the time, you're never really going to get better. Well, I was in, working in New York City television on the number one cable morning show in the world with the best producers and the best lighting people and the best everything. And it so it made me level up my game as well. And I loved that so much. And it also just, you know, opened my eyes to meeting new new people. And if I'd never gotten the job in New York, I never would have met Tim. I never would have ended up in Australia. Mm. But I have to also say, when we moved here, we thought, oh, we'll move here for a year or two. We'll see how things go. Maybe we'll have a baby, start a family. And then we'll move back. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there you yeah, are on that, the beautiful that South was how Coast. I sort of twisted, yeah, that was how, sort of how I twisted my mom and dad's arm into letting me come, you know, because I certainly wasn't running away from them or running away from anything. And um, things have just sort of transpired as they do once you have kids. You start laying down roots and we bought a house and things are really good. Mm-hmm. Who knows? I mean, we still may move back to the USA one day, of course, as an American, as a North Carolina girl, y'all, you know, it, it, it does, it is hard on me not being close to him, especially not being able like, you know, I have an eight month old baby now and a three year old and my three year old hasn't seen my mom and dad in ages and my eight month old has never met my mom and dad except on WhatsApp video. Mm. So and Zoom calls. Like we just had today with my whole whole family. One of my cousins is about to have her second baby. So we had a big baby shower with about twenty five people on there on Zoom. So thank goodness for technology, right? Absolutely. But, and I mean that that must be tough. And, and I'm sure there's a lot of new mums who, who might be living abroad feeling exactly what you're feeling right now, that you just, the fact you can't go home and, and introduce your baba to your family must mm. be a, a really difficult thing. Oh, yeah, it really, really is. But again, like I said, thank goodness for technology. And I also feel like it would be so much harder if the roles were reversed. And my family was in Australia and I was there in the United States because the way that COVID is right now, I mean, it's just awful. The talking to my aunts and uncles and cousins and everything. And they're like, what do you mean? You're just sort of living your life as you do. I said, well, you know, there's signs everywhere to stay a meter and a half away from everyone. Mm -hmm. And now we are wearing masks again in grocery stores and things, but you know, their lives are just completely turned upside down in every shape and sense of the word compared to here. So I feel so blessed to be here. I'm just counting my blessings. And I think my business has kept me really busy as well. You know, sometimes when you're busy, you can, that that can be a way for you to forget about things too. Definitely, definitely. And and being the mama of two beautiful little munchkins, Brooks and Annabelle, (laughs) can you share with me what your personal experience of of pregnancy and and if you're open to it, birth were like? How did that inform what you're doing now? So, um... Pregnancy, I, I li- liked both of my pregnancies. I understand there are a lot of women that hate their pregnancies for all sorts of reasons. You know, I had pretty normal pregnancies, which was really good. My son was um, a posterior baby. 
I was really, I'd done the she births course about natural birthing and all that. I really wanted to try to do that. And I was able to have him vaginally, but he was posterior, had an episiotomy, some, you know, I don't know how graphic you want to get, but. (laughs) (laughs) You um, go for it. Whatever's comfortable for you. I'm happy to go there. (laughs) Yeah. Well, most, you know, most births, unfortunately, are not text you know, mm. um, and as a fitness person, really wanting to get back into fitness and not just get my body back, but that's what makes me feel like me is that endorphin rush and everything. And it's, it's tough to get that when you're doing all low impact exercise, if you don't really know what you're doing. So that's sort of also what spurred on me wanting to learn more and more and more. And I was able to recover and get back to high impact exercise as most people are, but being an impatient person, I think motherhood, matrescence, uh, what, what did you say? Um, made into mother. Yeah. You, you learn patience so much, don't you? And patience mm. with your body and being gentle with yourself. And um, so, yeah, I guess that experience probably did make me want to learn a lot more. And also just being in another country opens your eyes to different things as well. In mm. the Eastern suburbs where I live, it seems very commonplace for women to go see a women's health physical therapist. It's just sort of something you do. It's not something that you only do if you're having terrible problems, whether that's incontinence or terrible back problems or terrible pubic pain or whatever it is. It's just sort of, this is what you do it around the six week check mark with your doctor. You also go there, you might get cleared hopefully for high impact exercise as well. That's what I recommend everybody do. And it made me, you know, through my birthing education, um, before my son was born, nothing like certification wise, but just, you know, like most moms do. And then also through my fitness certifications for pre and postnatal I learned so much that other parts of the world actually do this commonplace. In fact, mm-hmm. one of my members of Strong Sexy Mamas is French, and she says that their government actually pays for women to go. I forget if she said it was six or 12 appointments or something like that. And it's just sort of the way that we handle things. And if you were someone who had a knee surgery or a back surgery or anything, I mean, wouldn't, or elbow surgery, shoulder surgery, wouldn't you go have at least a couple of appointments? So it also sort of, opened my eyes to go, you know what, I need to try to raise awareness about this as well, that I think women need to be getting this. And, um, you know, I'm not trying to pretend like I'm a women's health physical therapist. I'm not, I'm prenatal and postnatal fitness certified, but I think fitness instructors have a duty of care not to make issues for women worse. And so I think the fitness industry also needs to change a bit and make it more mandatory for instructors to understand what women are going through. Cause yeah. it's something like 85% of women will have a baby at some point in their life. I totally. forget what the figure is. Don't quote me on that. It's something like that. And you know, it's, it's just important because our, we get these postural deviations, the kyphosis, the rounded shoulders for all the forward motions, the breastfeeding, if you're doing that, or just leaning over the crib, the cot, the car seat, everything bending down to pick up your toddlers or the lordosis where your back is, um, arching back the other way from having your big belly from pregnancy. And we get in these, uh, you, we, we get out of neutral alignment and it messes everything else up. Mm. And I mean, I haven't met a mom that hasn't said, Oh man, you know, bath time really hurts my back or something. And so I try in my program to really help women, not just get a neutral alignment when they're in class with me, but to go, okay, now think about hinging at the hips like this and having your shoulders back in a long spine when you're leaning over the bathtub or as you're feeding your little one or something like that. I mean, what I love about this conversation is raising awareness of these things and that it's actually not normal to live with pain. It's not normal to have a sore back or sore shoulders. Like that doesn't have to be the deal of motherhood. We can actually be proactive about looking after ourselves. Given our body has just literally performed a miracle, it probably (laughs) deserves a little bit of attention, right? It does. Absolutely. And we deserve to have 20 to 30 minutes a day for ourselves. The biggest complaint I hear from moms is, you know what? I just don't have time. I don't have time for myself. I mean, I get it. I used to always have my nails manicured. They aren't right now. I used to like always have a spray tan. I was, you know, I was a TV personality. I had all of the things <laughs> and I certainly don't these days while I'm looking after my two little ones running around and running a business and teaching fitness classes and all of that. But we deserve to have 20 to 30 minutes a day for ourselves. And I tell people if they say, you know what? I would love to do your program, but I don't have time or I would love to do this, but I don't have time. Mm. And I say, if you don't pick my program, pick somebody's program and you do have time. And if you don't have time, there's something wrong. You need to ask your partner or a neighbor or spend the money on a babysitter. I mean, this is, you know, exercise isn't just good for the body. It's good for the brain too. Totally. And I th- but I think for me as well in, in ha- like having access to your program and, and, 
Um, hearing you talk about your work, it's about fitness and it's about getting physically strong, but it's so much more than that. Um, in the sense, like, for example, I was one of those women that tried to dart back into the gym eight weeks, weeks in, went into the gym. They assigned me a personal trainer who was lovely guy, but literally 24 year old bloke. So next thing you know, he's got me like jump, doing jump squats and all sorts of things. And me thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not going to say anything, but this feels very unsafe right now. And any woman out there would know what I'm talking about. And I just wasn't even aware that I needed to be conscious of all of these things to really be able to look after myself and support my yeah. body through this huge shift. And what I love about what you do is it's it's about the physical knowledge, which empowers you to make the right decisions, but it's actually about the emotional support you need at that time. And we get so much support in pregnancy, but I actually found the postnatal period so much more vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you feel uncomfortable in your own body, if something hurts, whether it is your back or whether you have incontinence or whatever it is, if you feel uncomfortable in your own body, then everything else feels a bit uncomfortable. And, you know, babies are so unpredictable. It's nice to be able to predict something. And if you can predict that, you know what, these 20 to 30 minutes a day are just going to be me and, and my strong, sexy mama's workout class. (laughs) And I know that I'm in good hands. Um, the other thing is, you know, there are women, you know, they're, they're sort of the unicorns. If we want to stick with that theme that at eight weeks postnatal, they can jump. I mean, there yeah. aren't very many that I don't recommend that at all. Um, I recommend, in fact, if we want to talk at all about that 12 weeks minimum, most women will need four or five or six months. Some women will need even longer. And that will depend on your age, how big your baby was, what kind of delivery you had, your fitness levels before pregnancy. If you're breastfeeding, that can slow things down your recovery the core work that you've done early on, you know, if you're, if you're able to be in postural alignment correctly, Mm. you know, there's so many factors that can uh, contribute to where you are. So that's another thing strong sexy mamas does is I don't just go, okay, we're all just going to lay on our back and just do toe taps all day. And that's all we're going to do. I'll show you, you know, we start with toe taps. And if you don't notice any doming or coning or billowing out from your belly, then you can probably start sliding your leg out a little bit farther. And then, you know, then we build on and we've got several different um, stages, uh, several different stages Mm. that you go through that are not based on the trimester that you are in pregnancy or based on the number of weeks you are postnatal, but more based on your ability and teaching women to tune in to their body. Because we Mm. also forget to do that. (laughs) Which is incredible given, you know, if, if we're doing your program, chances are we've just had a baby. So the ability <laughs> to tune into the body is, you know, such an important thing. Um, and I, I want to actually talk about sex for a minute because mm. your whole business is about being strong and sexy. So, you know, look, I can only... Oh, but it's not about sex at all. <laughs> well, no, and when I say sex, I don't mean specifically sex. I mean this whole idea of sexy. And you just mentioned before, yeah. you know, prior to becoming a mum, you did the fake tans and all of that. And I think I absolutely did too. And, I, you know, I think becoming a mum, you just don't have as much time for those things. But I also think your whole definition of your physicality changes and and how you look changes um, because, as we've just said, you've, you've gone through such a big transformation in your body. So I'm interested to know, as the creator of Strong and Sexy Mamas, what does sexy mean to you? How does it represent who you are as a mum? It's, it's more, you know, it's kind of like Strong Sassy Mamas, I guess. It's more about feeling confident and good in the skin that you're in. And, um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's the most, the, the, the best way to put it is that feel, you're feeling good in your own skin. You're feeling confident. You're feeling good. You're feeling like yourself. Yeah. You're taking your life, your body by the horns and going, I got this. I'm going to, I'm going to start slow. I'm going to progress as I get stronger and I'm going to get my groove back. And you can take that to be whatever you want it to be to get your groove back, whether that's mm. just feeling like yourself again, whether that's emotionally, whether that's physically getting your biceps and triceps back, whether that's getting your groove back with your partner or what have you. Um, but strong, sexy mamas, it's got a good ring to it. It does <laughs> it have a good ring to it. Their, <laughs> it makes people turn their heads. Um, and then the reason that it's mamas instead of mamas or mo- mamas um, is, you know, we say mom in the USA, we say mom here in Australia. And if I say strong, sexy moms, then it's, sort of alienates 
the moms here. And if I say moms, it makes, you know, people in the U.S. go, oh, this program isn't for me. And it really is for everyone. It's kind of a fun thing, too, is that we do during our challenges, often we'll do these live classes over Zoom sometimes. And, you know, we've got women tuning in from Alabama and from Florida and from New York and North Carolina, of course, since that's where I'm from and um, Brizzy and Melbourne and Sydney. And it's just really cool that we're all able to connect in that way too. Totally. I mean, that's the best thing, isn't it? Having a community of women who are all going through the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We've got a private Facebook group too, which I have to say before COVID hit, I thought all of that was just very strange and weird. Um, Virtual relationships and, you know, I don't know. I just thought it was so strange. And I have absolutely loved this private Facebook group that we have. Women are just posting sweaty selfies when they're done or they're posting, um, a recipe that they've just come across that's nice and healthy that their toddler will actually eat that didn't take them an hour to make. And, um, or, you know what, I'm feeling really low today. I need some motivation. Who can help me? That kind of thing. And it's nice to get to know people and, you know, even if it is just through a screen like that. Yeah. So what can we expect from the program? If we've got any mamas to be or mamas out there, what can they expect? Oh, yes. Well, I also, for your followers, and I can give you the links for this. I would but love I have, the links for the show notes and share away here. I'm sure we'd all love to follow along um, and, and be a part of your virtual world so we can see what you're up okay. to. So um, if you sign up with me for free, you can get um, pelvic floor tips, which again, that is not just the focus of Strong Sexy Mamas, but it's just something that I feel like every program that is fitness related ought to be incorporating. And I think I'm sort of a trailblazer with this. I really am convinced that down the line it will be because the pelvic floor does so much more than just control, you know, your bodily functions, as people like to say. It's not just stopping the wind Mm. and the rain. Uh, You know, it's it's a great stabilizer for your entire core. And if you can get your whole core functioning properly, then it's a lot easier to get everything else nice and toned as well. And you'll feel a lot better in your skin. So anyway, pelvic floor tips. I've got um, 10 free flat tummy exercises that people can sign up for. I have a um, prenatal roadmap and a postnatal roadmap, um, and also a free mama fitness guide. So I've got five things. You can pick what you want to share with your followers, but they can get a little bit of a taste of what Strong Sexy Mamas is about, or we have a seven-day free trial as well. So the way that I think I was explaining a bit before, but the way that the classes work is they are, unless otherwise stated, they're pre- and postnatal friendly. So that just means that in some of the classes, I am actually pregnant, and some of them I'm only eight, seven, eight weeks postnatal. Actually, six weeks is when I started filming some. Um but I often will give three options for exercises. So I'll show the, the very basic, the low intensity, kind of a, a mo- or low impact and kind of a moderate impact and then a high impact. So what that might look like would be uh, a burpee, a full body burpee would be for the women who have already, you know, they're well on their way in their recovery journey, right? They're back to the high impact exercise. The next one down might be an incline plank step out. So you put your hands on an incline, whether that's your, uh, your kitchen counter or your coffee table, if that's what you're doing at home, or if you've got an exercise bench and you do a plank step out and then, um, even easier than that would be a knee push up using an incline. And so I will often give, you know, three different exercises. You take your pick, what's working for you, teach you to tune into your body, um, during the classes. And then there are some classes, of course, that are separated for pregnancy. There's a pregnancy core class, postnatal, early postnatal core, core progressive, and core strong. And we'll keep layering those on as I go on my postnatal journey up to one year to get women, you know, these are the exact tummy exercises that I'm doing at this point in my postnatal journey, in this point, in this point, in this point, to get back to, to where you want to be. And then I've got a really fun class called Coyman Cardio that's a mix of kickboxing, dancing, athletic drills, and toning, which is a favorite. And all of these classes I do film, or not all of them, but the majority of them in our Mama Fit School and Pregnancy Fit School are filmed with other moms going through the same things that you are at home for the mamas listening. This is not me hiring fitness trainers, fitness models to do this alongside of me, Um, but it is professionally filmed with beautiful Bondi blue water behind us and moms with prams, you know, that some of them are eight weeks postnatal, just like I am, or they might have a toddler or they might be pregnant as well. But um, it just, I think makes women feel like, although I have to say, and you, you'll know this being in what doing mm. what you do, but the editing with babies crying and all of that, it's certainly, oh, yeah. made <laughs> uh, they say never work with animals and babies. Right. Um, and so, but 
I, I feel like in the feedback I've gotten from my moms is that it really makes them go, you know, this is different than anything else I've seen anywhere else. And if they can do it, I can do it. Uh, you know, if my little ones cry, I can press pause, come back five minutes later. Um, and yeah, feel, it makes it feel more like a community that way. And that actually might be a beautiful segue to my last question, which is you're clearly an incredible woman of purpose and you are also a mama. How do you do the juggle, which you oh. clearly do so well? What are your tips if there are any? If there are any women out there like us, you know, I honestly think you move into fearless warrior phase when you become a mum, and you're pursuing any kind of purpose, whether that's a business or a passion or whatever it is. So, what are your tips yes. for that juggle? Well, I think that you ask for help when you need it. Um, I am very bad about trying to be super superwoman and do absolutely everything. Mm. Like my son was not even in daycare till about a week and a half ago. So I was juggling both of them. My mother-in-law would take him one day, but, um, and then I would have a couple hours free from them while I would go teach classes. But, um, so that meant a lot of late nights and all of that. Um, and a lot of mushy brain. I don't know if anybody at home can relate to this, but where you just feel like, oh my gosh, I'm up breastfeeding in the middle of the night. And then my toddler's asking me for a, a squeezy fruit every other second. And, um, so the, the dishwasher ends up half empty and the, <laughs> as I'm unloading it and the washing machine, I'll accidentally leave the washing in for three hours, <laughs> just taking <laughs> it out, putting it in the dryer, or putting it on the line. Um, but the juggle, yeah, I guess I would say ask for help because e- even the last couple of weeks, my brain has felt clearer just by asking for a little bit of help. Um, and then another thing, you know, when, when you're transitioning careers, I don't think it is for everyone to do at the time of that you're also becoming a mom because mm-hmm. there's a million things that are changing in your life. And it is sweeping change is hard for anybody. Um, and mine was really hard moving to another country as well. Yeah. But um, I was and, and you have to think about things financially and all of that. Uh, so I don't think it's for everybody. I think that you, if you are switching careers that it is very important to really think through things and how, how you're going to do it. If you are going to do this while you're a mom, and I think this is a transition period for a lot of us because we also realize that we want to be home with our little ones or we want to be more home more with our little ones or just not be on call at the house when we get home from work, if we've got little ones, um, uh, you really need to have a supportive partner. And my mm-hmm. husband has been awesome with with all of that. You know, if I need to be getting things ready for the business the next day or even working on my choreography because I do teach live classes around Bondi Beach as well then big shout out to the dads out there that time yeah we can't forget about them you know we act like moms are always the heroes but my husband's pretty pretty amazing too (laughs) Anna it's been a joy to chat with you today thank you so much for joining me on the DNA of Purpose podcast can you share Uh, share with our listeners your links where do we find you what's your what's your website Sure. So it's strongsexymamas.com. And remember, I said it's not mom and it's not mom. It's mamas with two M's. Strong Sexy Mamas, M-A-M-M-A-S. Uh, find me on Instagram. I'm pretty active there as well. We've got a good little following there. And strongsexymamas.com. I'll send you those links so that people can get the pelvic floor exercises, flat tummy tips, prenatal, postnatal roadmaps, whatever they'd like to have. And I'd love to love to see some folks on the inside of our private Facebook group and get to know them as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. It's been an honor. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on the podcast. If you'd like to follow along, please do at the DNA of Purpose on Instagram. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is the DNA of Purpose with Rebecca Tapp. And if you'd like to keep up to date with all of our team's news and events, you can jump onto my website, which is RebeccaTapp.com. That is RebeccaTapp with two Ps.com. Also, if you love what we do, then please do leave us a review. It would be greatly appreciated. Or if you'd like to share your inspiration with our team, we'd love to hear from you. Please do uh, reach out, say hi at your favorite social media hangout.